Okay, Darnell Mac stamps by Kate. Say I'm gonna show you how to make the hummingbird pattern. So I start with the pairs and I match them up wrong so right sides together and I put the pin right there at my end point and I'm going to start stitching from uh, that start point. Now this is where, um, oh, I'm using some black thread so y'all can see it. Um, that way, that way y'all can see the stitching. So I put my first stitch in there. Now I do a back stitch, back stitch. Now, oh, see, I turned it over and looked at the back of it just to make sure that my points lined up, and they do. Now you can see the little pucker. So I've got my first stitch. Now I'm going to go back in. That's my first complete back stitch. One more time for another back stitch, and now I just continuing continue the running stitch. Always remember, you start with a back stitch, back stitch, running stitch. When you get to that pin, that's my stopping point, and do a back stitch, back stitch. That makes it really tight right there so that when um, you start doing the piecing for the next piece, it doesn't pull apart. And this ensures also when it's quilted that um, your stitching just doesn't unravel. All right, so that's finished the first unit, my first pair. Now I flip it, I do the solids because those are typically dark. I finger press it and that kind of sets those seams. Now I get ready for the next pair. Now I put all these in a baggie so that I can take them on the go or you can do them by machine as well. But again, I mark that end point with a straight pen. I check the back side, make sure it's good. Oop. Now, I'm looking for within two or three threads from that end point because when you're done with the quilting, nobody will ever see that. All right, check the back side on that first point. It's close. And now I do my first stitch, complete the first back stitch, second back stitch, and I continue with a running stitch. Check the back side. That way I just check to see that I'm sewing on that dotted line right there. And now I pull it on through. I don't stitch into the seam allowances. And I do my um, first stitch right there at that point because I didn't get that close to it with the pin. My first back stitch and a second back stitch. And now I can cut my threads. and finger press and get ready for the next step. Again, I press to the solid because I want, when I put those four piece units together, for them to match up and nest. All right, now I match the right sides together and I kind of start right there at that intersection point. See how the um, fabrics kind of nest together? They're kind of going the wrong, the opposite directions. And I use my finger to nest those together real closely. And so you just use your fingers, your forefinger and your thumb to kind of squish it together. Now you can put a pin right there. Um, after I flip the seam allowance on that other side, I want to match up that end point and get those seam allowances out of the side because I'm at it onto one side. I'm not going to stitch into those seam allowances. Those pins that I put in are the end point. So I'll stitch right up to that seam allowance. All right, there's that first stitch. Now I do a sec a first back stitch. and a second back stitch. The black red, the, the black thread really throws, really shows up when I've got little loops at the end. I usually don't even worry about those. Now I bump up right against that pin where I stop because I don't want to stitch into the seam allowance. Pull the pin out. Now I'm going to make it real, real tight right there. Um, you can see how tight I pull into it because I don't want them to pull out at that intersection. All right, so notice that seam allowance is kind of in my way and the thread is on the wrong side. So I'm just going to shove my 
start my um, needle and thread through the seam allowance. It's not going to be seen from the other side because I kind of do that in the seam allowance. So I shove the needle through to the other side and I'll pull the needle through and get ready to make my next step stitch. All right, so I start my first stitch, check to the other side. I'm right there at that edge of that seam allowance. You can see the pucker. There's my first stitch, back stitch, and my second back stitch. Now I do those right there on that on both sides so that I can get a, a real nice point right there. And it forces the fabric right into that point so that it matches up. I go to the um, uh, last pin and that's my stopping point. Pull the thread through and I smooth out the gathers and do a back stitch and another back stitch. Pull it nice and tight. If it's not tight enough right there and you feel like you didn't catch it properly, just take another stitch. At the end of the day, you don't want your stuff to fall apart when you start on the next step. Uh, you want it to stand the test of time. So I cut my thread, peel the pieces back so that I can see the back a bit. You may want to do this with a hot iron. You press, don't, uh, don't iron. You want to press it and set those seams. But take a look how that looks. Now it's up to. It, this is where I get all the seam allowances going into the same direction, and I end up with that nice little rosette right there at the center. When you do that, that pops all of those those four pieces of fabric right into the center. Uh, and so where there might have been some imperfections when you first start the hand stitching, that forces everything right there in the center. It's beautiful the way it works.